In this lesson, we're going to look at how to add and subtract radicals. Um, so you can set up your notebook and complete your notes on the note template, or you can just write your own notes um, in your notebook. You don't have to have the note template to complete your notes. Okay, do that. Okay, so like radicals. Okay, so this is very similar to like terms. <clears throat> Let's talk about what a like radical is and define that. Like radicals just mean that they are terms with the same radical part. Radical part. They have to um, both have the radical sign. They have to have the same radicand is basically what they are saying the same radicand. And let me go ahead and give you an example of that. Um, for example, the square root of 3 and 4 to the square root of 3. Those would be considered like radicals um, because they both have that square root of 3 part. It doesn't matter that this one has a 4 and this one doesn't. It's only the radical part that we're looking at to see if it's the same, if we can put it together. <clears throat> now let's just look at some really simple examples. In number one, um, I have 3x plus 7x. These don't have any radicals, but I did this one to remind you that when we add or subtract like terms or like radicals, all we do is add or subtract the coefficient. The variable doesn't change and we're going to see that the radical part doesn't change. So all we have to do is 3 plus 7 is 10 x and that's it. That is this expression simplified. Okay, so let's look at the next example, number 2. This is a radical expression because it has radicals. They both have the same radical part, and so all we have to do is add their coefficients. It's just like if these were x's. So 2 plus 7 is 9, and then it stays the square root of 5. So it's 9 the square root of 5, just like that. So just a reminder, when adding and subtracting radicals, only the coefficient changes and the radical stays the same. So I can't stress that enough because you're going to want to change those and we don't do that. Okay, so let's look at a bunch of examples together. Okay, so on number three, do we have like radicals? Yes, we do. What would be under what would be the coefficient right here? What would be understood to be the coefficient right there? I hope you're thinking 1, because that bothers us too. So this is 13 minus 1, which is 12, and then the radical part stays the same. Now, is this simplified? Is the square root of 6 in simplest radical form? Yes, it is. So we're done. That's it. That's all we have to do for that problem. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, so on number four, uh-oh, we don't have like radicals. But is the square root of 12 in simplest radical form? No, it is not. So that's the first thing we're going to have to do here. So remember in our previous lesson, we learned to think of square roots that were within 12 or that were factors of 12. I hope you're thinking 4. That would be 4 times 3, right? The square root of 4, remember that comes out. So that's 2, the square root of 3, and then plus 5, the square root of 3. And then look, now we do have like radicals. So all we have to do is 2 plus 5, which is 7 the square root of 3. Okay, so if you don't have like radicals to begin with, you've got to look at what you can simplify and what you can make it. Okay, getting a little bit harder. 
and zoom in a little bit better so you can see that. Okay, so zero like terms. Okay, so we're going to um, work on simplifying this first. Okay, so negative 2 the square root of 20. So the square root of 20, um, let's see, so we've got negative 2. We don't want to forget about that. And then I hope you're thinking 4 times 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this one. Square root of 4 is 2. Now when we bring the 2 out, we're going to do negative 2 times 2. <clears throat> because that negative 2 was already out there, 2 is the square root of 4. So that makes negative 4 the square root of 5. Okay, let's do 2 to the square root of 18. So I hope that you're immediately thinking 9 times 2. The square root of 9 is 3, so we've got 2 times 3. So remember, whatever's already out here gets multiplied with what we pull out. Okay, so this would end up being plus 6, the square root of 2. Okay, and then let's see, I'm going to go up and do this one. So we've got negative 3, the square root of 8 would be 4 times 2. Square root of 4 is 2, so that's negative 3 times 2. This 2 stays behind. So we've got minus 6, the square root of 2. Okay, if that confused you, think about it for a second, look at it, pause the video. Or, and also you could go back and rewind it and re-listen to that again, so that makes sense. Okay, so now let's see where our like terms are. Well, negative 4 to the square root of 5, there is no other radical the square root of 5. So that's going to stay as is. Okay, now these happen to have the same radical. 6 minus 6 is just 0. So that completely cancels out. We have nothing else left, and so our simplest form would be negative 4, the square root of 5. Okay, let's try another one. If you want to stop for a second and try to simplify each of these first, and, you know, that's kind of cheating because, look, we already got it over here, so never mind. Okay, so we already said that negative 2, the square root of 20, Simplify to negative 4 the square root of 5. Okay, so negative 4 the square root of 5. We already figured out that 2 the square root of 18 simplified to 6 the square root of 2. Okay, and then square root of 5 already simplified, so I'm just going to write it down. Okay, so now this time, what are my like radicals? negative 4 the square root of 5, and negative 2 the square root of 5. So negative 4 minus 2, negative 6 the square root of 5, plus 6 the square root of 2. I can't do anything else because these are not like radicals. And so this is my simplified expression.